the live stream right now, but I don't know if it's happening. Well, because it's delayed. Oh, golly, I can see it now. <laughs> Welcome, live stream. <laughs> Welcome, everybody in the room, too, to the premiere of Cell Block Tango Reimagined, presented hey. by everybody on stage in collaboration with Musicals Reimagined hey. and with very generous funding for the Canada Council for the Arts. Hey. Money. <laughs> My name is Chelsea Jane Bray. My pronouns are she, her. I am a fat white woman with curly brown hair. I'm wearing a black shirt with puff sleeves and I get to be your host for tonight. Hey! Yes! Before we get started, we do wanna do a special thank you to the Disability Collective who were our accessibility consultants on the show tonight. If you wanna learn a little bit more about uh, accessibility in theater, how to make your performances a little more accessible, you can follow them on Instagram at Disability Collective. Don't at the Disability Collective. Nor, I looked it up today. It's <gasps> at Disability oh. Collective, but thank you so much Sorry, for correcting folks. me, Gray. <laughs> wow. Uh, someone didn't do their homework. Uh, uh, okay. I hope someone in the, in the comments goes, actually, Greg was right. <laughs> no, no, they're just saying hi from everywhere. So we do have an international live streaming audience. Like Greg says, if something goes wrong with it, which it won't because we're all IT wizards here, but if something goes wrong with it, we'll take a quick pause so that no one at home misses out on the fun. All right. Um, should we do some introductions here? Sure. Well, first things first, I think I have to introduce myself. Hi. <laughs> okay, here's what happened. So in November 2020, Greg um, started everybody on stage, right? And I at like two in the morning thought, oh, okay, Frig, I'll submit to my friend's thing or whatever. After being begged, yes. <laughs> and then that turned into why are they not fat? I don't know if you've seen it at all. Woo! Thank you, thank you very much. So it's this little YouTube series that Greg has been producing that I'm doing that basically asks the question, why are none of these characters fat? Anyway, I think we have a little clip of it today. We just might, because this, this why are they not fat was also part of our grant. And uh, here's a little clip from next week's episode starring Chelsea Jane Bray. Oh, okay. This one was written by Blair McMillan and Janice Niles. Kill those lights. I don't, I don't, I truly don't remember how I started, I started these. Hello, and welcome to Why Are They Not Fat? The corner of the internet where we look at casting choices and Broadway musicals and ask the question, how come these people aren't even fat though? Frig. Why are they not fat? I'm your host, Chelsea Jane Bray, longtime taxpayer, first time government employee. Today's episode is brought to you by the Canada Council for the Arts. What? Today, Big Daddy Trudeau is paying us to talk about Chicago. The show where thin people get away with murder and the fat ones are called Mama. That feels icky, right? Anyway, so tell me, why is Roxy Hart not fat? This is a bit of a tangent, for sure, but do y'all remember those real beauty commercials when a dove was the first one to say that fat people were allowed to be included? They were like, oh, everyone's beautiful, you're your own worst critic, and then they just showed slightly larger white women in their underwear. They said, fat people, now with one quarter moisturizing cream, fat people, they're more supple than they were before. Fat people, maybe you'll touch them now? <laughs> And then we were all like, okay, so you didn't quite hit the mark here, Doug. Which is frustrating because you're also the only people aiming in the right direction. And we all generally agree with the premise. Like, yeah, sure, you're probably your own worst critic. And yeah, everyone deserves to feel beautiful. But then it all kind of took a weird left turn into brave. Instead of saying, look at these beautiful, desirable, sexy bodies, we said, ah, yes, women in high-waisted cotton underwear. How brave they are from coming out from under their hiding garments, even though we will point and laugh at them and call them fat. Why are they not fat? If you would like to know actually what that's about, <laughs> you can watch the episode next week. Thursday? See you on Thursday. See you on Thursday. I'm gonna wink at this a lot, but I, I do mean it for everyone. I'm winking at the room collectively. 
Anyway, I would like to introduce a couple people here on stage. We have Greg Carruthers here, founder of Everybody On Stage. And of course, the lovely Sasha Dennis, the founder of Musicals Reimagined, and the director of tonight's film. Joe, want to say a couple words? Sure. Hey, my name's Greg. I use he, him pronouns. Um, I am a white man wearing a black suit, an Everybody On Stage merch shirt, which is available in the back corner, um, and online very soon. And uh, I'm sitting in front of a gorgeous screen surrounded by lovely people. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Sasha Dennis. I use she, her pronouns. I am a fierce black queen with boho locks that are autumn leaves. It's new. 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 <laughs> Install them today. Uh, uh, no, really excited to be here. This is, uh, I'm so glad we get to collab on this. It's, uh, it's pretty epic. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and funny enough, we actually just got out of a meeting for a project that's going to be announced next Thursday, which is our first uh, equity gig together. No spoilers. Um, but yeah, yeah, Sasha and I have been collaborating for many, many years now, now pre-pandemic. Pre -pandemic. Um, and lots, and lots of you have been in shows that we've, we've worked, worked on, on, so thanks so for thanks coming, coming, folks. <laughs> um, but, no, but no, this, this, this work, work is really important, important to us, us and, and the, the impact, impact that this, this work has had, had being sure this echoes fun, huh? Live streaming. The impact that this work has had is super amazing. We've had seven out of nine performers in this cast got their actor debut in this project, which is super amazing. This project, this project has been, has been shared, shared far and wide. It blew up on TikTok, TikTok yesterday, and um, people, people people are really responding. So I just want to take a moment for all the performers in this room who were so brave and shared their stories, and all the amazing people who worked on the film and made this possible. So let's give this up for yourselves. So I think so we I know think what I do. I do. Uh, everybody on stage advocates, advocates for body diversity, diversity in our art spaces. spaces. We're combating fat phobia, too. What's the rest sure, of the sentence? We're, we're combating, combating fat phobia to um, mitigate the long-term health effects on artists. Oh, that's much better, thank you. Uh, to mitigate the long-term effects on artists and um, the issues with body dysmorphia and disordered eating. Sasha, do you yeah. want to tell us a bit about Musicals Reimagined? Musicals Reimagined is really a platform, it's actually a, a director's vision board for myself um, to reimagine classics, classics that we've seen so many times before and kind of reimagine them in a way that um, kind of reflects our world and uh, you know our society. Mm -hmm. So we would love to bring up a special guest this evening. Ladies and, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen and all those in between, give it up for Matt Murray. <laughs> Come yeah, see Matt. Hi Matt. <laughs> Hi everyone. Matt is our you? amazing writer, uh, adapter on this project. Adapter, yes. yes. Yeah. Do you want to give us a little physical description of yourself? Uh, sure. My name is Matt Murray. I use he, him pronouns. I am a white man. I'm wearing a blue shirt with skateboarders on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm donning a haircut, which I gave myself last night. Hey! So uh, you can imagine how that looks. <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm admiring your shirt. Um, <laughs> you know, it's interesting because we came up with that, uh, the title Adapter. Uh, can you talk about a bit about why it was not writer but adapt? Adaptation. Yeah, I mean, first of all, obviously, we were working off an existing um, number, so that was one factor, but a big factor was um, just what a collaborative process it was and how really my job was to um, you know, help with the casting process, but then yeah. once we had our cast, um, take time to interview each one of them, listen to their stories, and just get a strong sense of what it was they were trying to say, and what was the unique perspective they were bringing to this piece. And so at the end of the day, I mean, really, it was, I would say, more about facilitating and streamlining um, what each individual had to say. So adaptation felt mm -hmm. way more appropriate than writing because it, I think within you know each person's chunks, um, there's a lot of verbatim quotes within it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it just felt like adaptation felt more appropriate. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think a lot of people know that you write a lot. You're a really well-known emerging playwright in Toronto. And um, can you tell us a bit about like your process in terms of what what's so different about what you usually do, which is mostly pantos and, and you write your own musicals. Mm -hmm. But what was different about this one? Um, I think this one was interesting because, funnily enough, the first 
The first writing I ever tried to do was writing parody songs for a friend of mine who used to do uh, cabarets. Um, my friend Kara Leslie, rest her soul, was known as Toronto's first female drag queen, <laughs> and so she used to get me to rewrite filthy lyrics for <laughs> uh, Disney songs, and so um, that was really my first toe into any sort of writing, espe especially lyrically, so it was really fun to go back to this, and as I said, take something that we all know so well and is so in the zeitgeist and in the world of musical theater and really turn it on its head mm -hmm. and I think offer something that is really fresh and really exciting. Um, and yeah, and it was great because it didn't take seven years like all my other shows <laughs> take. So <laughs> that was really refreshing. Yeah, Matt actually took, we had our interviews week one and then Matt took took the took the interview away. He wrote us some lyrics and then the second week they came back, we presented it and everyone gave us their notes and that was the whole process. Mm -hmm. It was very, very quick. We did this <laughs> all very quickly. Um, <laughs> but you wouldn't know it from, from Matt's lyrics. It's um, it really it really helped give us cohesiveness throughout the piece, mm -hmm. which was really great. Yeah. I, I really appreciate how, you know, we invited everyone to audition and with the folks that we did choose, you know, it was really important for you to not feel like you were writing for them, but ri writing with them. So I think that was really cool how you just, the, the, the writing was amazing. So it was, and it really oh, made thanks. them feel like their voices were heard. So, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thanks so much. It. Give it up for Matt, folks. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> so, of course, we're here to watch the film, but there is a few things that we're going to get to watch beforehand. I don't know if you've been following uh, everybody on stage's social media at all this week. <laughs> yes? Okay, great. Then you've maybe seen a little bit th of this already. So uh, Greg has been sharing some extra clips from all of the performers in the film that actually aren't in the film. And uh, I learned that 10 minutes before the show started. <laughs> so we're in for a friggin' treat. <laughs> um, so first of all, we're going to take a look at Trish Adams' uh, uh, verse today, but today? No, just right this now. moment. Right. In this <laughs> She's going to be joining us on Zoom in a moment, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so a little bit about Trish. She started her career performing at the age of four with the Canada Opera Company, and over the next 60 years, has toured all across Canada with various theatre companies, and then internationally with Disney Cruise Lines, and now right here for us. Let's take a look. I was 32 and I had my first kid. At the time, that was pretty young for a gal in the biz. But what can I say? I wanted a family. So here I am, back in the race in my 60s, and still kicking. Literally. I still got a fan kick on both sides. Trouble is, the industry only sees people like me as two things. Young and hot, or old and not. But it ain't that black and white. There's a whole lot of gray. Not on my head, of course. Genetics. And sure, some things aren't what they used to be. So would it kill them to send sides that aren't in a microscopic font? I guess what I'm trying to say is, if art's supposed to imitate life, shouldn't it actually do that? Cause baby, this is life. I've had it coming. I've had it coming. I got a fire you can't deny. Now that you've met me, don't you forget me, cause there is more than what meets the eye. Too old. Disable box tick. Uh -uh. He's 20. Quota. Too old. Disable box. All right, and I believe we have Trish here with us. We oh, do. Is. Hello, Trish. Hi. <laughs> oh. Oh, she's chatting over there. Oh, my God. Oh, we see her over here. Yeah. We see her here. Yeah. I don't know if we can hear Trish. Can you hear me? Close to me. Yeah. We sure can if we do this. Hey, Trish. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Was that really? You got to know? Yeah. All right. All right. Hey, Trish. Hey, Trish. How's it going? Hi, Trish. Good. 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 Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, do you want to talk about why you are at home right now? Uh, sure. Um, I had uh, cataract surgery on Tuesday on my second eye. A month ago, I had it on my first eye. So I didn't want to take a chance on having too much fun. <laughs> and we know Trish is the life of the party, so that would definitely happen. So Trish, you've had a very long and lustrous career. Do you want to talk a bit about uh, your journey through this industry? 
Um, yeah, I, uh, I started young, but really didn't get started as a dancer until I was about 12. And um, in those days, there were no musical theater schools. It was, you learned how to dance in a dance studio. You learned how to sing maybe by, I don't know, watching movies. Um, and acting, you just, well, whatever. Um, so you really learned on the boards. You really learned uh, when you got work. And so I was lucky I got work. Um, and then in the mid 80s, I, late 80s, I got married. I left the business. I had a couple of kids. And then I went back to it in uh, late 90s and kind of, you know, slogged away and did a lot of stuff film, TV, uh, everything. Mm -hmm. And it, and I did Disney in 2007, which was pretty awesome. I turned uh, 50 the year I came off the ship. Wow. So I was definitely the oldest woman <laughs> on the ship. Um, it was an amazing experience. Mm. Uh, phenomenal. And then, you know, life, it was, as I got older, it was tough because there just wasn't as much work, particularly in theater. So uh, I just ended up walking away from it. Um, and, you know, it was tough. Uh, and then I was introduced um, to another company who I still work with, Well Seasoned, well -seasoned Productions. Mm -hmm. And that's for work with people over 50, with uh, performers over 50. And we've been going since about 2015. And um, we've been able to keep things going throughout the pandemic by doing video, which is quite brutal for theater people as we all learned doing this project. Um, but I'm keeping my hand in it. I'm, I'm, you know, still auditioning for stuff, not necessarily a lot of theater, but um, I stay, I'm trying to stay fit by teaching older adults uh, fitness. And I have two grandchildren, so they keep me fit. Um, so yeah, about it. Love that. I mean, we saw that leg. Higher than mine's ever been. Give it up. <laughs> hey, Trish, what's your dream role? My dream role? Yeah. Oh. I don't know. Are there any for my age? I mean, quite frankly, I don't know. Um, I've done it. I've done them. I've done Anita and, of course, and Deanna Morales. I mean, I've done them. I'd love to be mean. Um, I'd love to do Gypsy, love to do Mama Rose, love to do Mama Rose. I guess that would be a good one. That would be a good one. I don't know if you've seen on TikTok. Um, are you on TikTok? No, okay. not really. Well, you should, you should go on TikTok <laughs> because people on TikTok are freaking out about you. Oh. Um, I, I'm not sure most of you have seen. She broke the internet. She broke the internet. Um, <laughs> people are people are freaking out. There's like 6,000 views on oh TikTok. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, people. Yeah. And the hu huge response, huge response. Wow. People, so many people are in the comments are like, are you casting me? I'm over 40. I'm a drag queen. I'm from here. I'm this. I'm this. And you you really struck at the chord of people. So I just want you to know the impact of, of the work you did. Huge. It's wow. Huge. Huge. Yeah. Excellent work. That's great. That's great. great. That's great. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, Trish, I'd like to know, what's your message for folks about well-seasoned actors in the industry? What's your message? The big thing is, is God, God willing, um, we're all going to get there. It's inevitable. You know, death and taxes, getting old. It's absolutely inevitable. So, um, be patient. I'm not a patient person. I've learned how to be, I've gotten more patient as I've gotten older, as we, as we do when we get older, lots of things change in our, our, our outlook and opinion and does change over as we get older. Be patient. Um, stay fit, stay healthy, stay healthy, stay healthy. Um, keep a positive attitude because it, it, it will come back around. I'm 63 and it's come back around to me. There's nothing to say it can't come back to you. Um, it just means when your when your time is ready, your your time is ready. So stay healthy, stay fit, stay positive. Yes, can't wait to see what you do next, Trish. Thanks so much. Give it up. For Thank you. Greg. Yo. 
Yeah. Are you trying to get everyone to have a TikTok account? It's truly my mission in life. <laughs> Every time I talk to Gray, it's, oh, hey, how you doing? Have you posted a TikTok yet today? Every, e I swear to God. I don't know if you know, Chelsea, you're funny. And uh, people on TikTok seem to like funny, so you should really. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> our next performer, George Alavizos, is the first ever graduate in a wheelchair from a professional acting program in Canada. Hey. Oh, okay, wow. Sure. In addition to his multiple theater and film roles, including being featured on CBS's Star Trek Discovery, he serves as a council member for ACTRA Toronto and ACTRA National. That's a lot. Like, I can't <laughs> even get out of bed sometimes. And like, two councils? Nuh-uh. <laughs> Anyway, should we take a look at his clip here? Yes. <laughs> In 2019, I left theater school as the only person I know in a wheelchair to graduate from a performing arts program. But hey, I've always had a knack for being number one. Since grad, I've had a decent run. You booked it, became three of my favorite words. But, spoil alert, the parts always seem to revolve around my chair. Why can't I just be a hero? Lover, father, brother, hell. How about a gay James Bond? I've had it coming, I've had it coming. Come on and open up your mind. Yeah, you can change it. Just rearrange it. We're over to for a redefine. Too old. Disabled. Box tick. Quota. Too old. Disabled. Box tick. Who's 20? George, correct me if I'm wrong. That was your first, this was your first dance call that you've done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Isn't that wild, folks? That's wild. And let me tell you, the way George attacked that dance call, let I think for those, obviously, those of you who are here were in the room. <laughs> but um, it was absolutely outstanding and so inspiring. And th those kicks I, uh, ended up in that show because, yeah. because of what you did. So I'm still beautiful reeling. Work. I'm still reeling. Like, yeah. from the audition tapes, it, it, you, you stood out. Mm -hmm. um, just the way you uh, handled the choreography and just made it your own, I was just, I was living for you. So <laughs> I was like, I was really excited to work with you. <laughs> Amazing. Do you want to tell us a bit about your journey through the industry and, like, how, how did we end up here today? Yeah. Wow. Okay, um, <laughs> a very long journey. Uh, um, yeah, no, I um, I started at a pretty young age. I did drama all throughout my youth, mm -hmm. uh, growing up. Um, and then in grade 12, I thought about it. I was like, what do I want to do for a living? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I don't want to do like the typical nine to five job. And then my drama teacher was like, no, you want to become an actor. And I'm like, Maybe I do. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know, right? But um, I auditioned for a bunch of different theater programs, and then I got into the one that I went to, which was U of T Sheridan. I did their joint mm -hmm. theater program, um, and it it was an incredible learning curve. I got to learn a lot about my own um, my own artistic endeavor, like what I wanted to bring to the industry, and then. I graduated and then here I am. <laughs> amazing. Yeah, yeah. That is amazing. Um, I want to know uh, what you learned about yourself throughout this process that you didn't like that surprised you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for the uh, hard questions. Yeah, you're ri <laughs> you really <laughs> are. <laughs> Damn. Uh, um, I learned a lot about. I I've never thought that there was a place for me in the musical theater world. Mm. Um, I thought it was always going to be a really difficult journey for me if I wanted to go in that route. Um, and I learned a lot about what I wanted to bring to the industry and what I wanted to bring to the musical theater world and what I thought I could really break down barriers, like what, what things I could bring to mm -hmm. my work. And I, and I really believed in myself by the end of it that I can actually do musical theater but it just needs to be adapted more mm -hmm. uh to what i can do and like what my strengths are and whatnot but um yeah no i've i learned a lot about what i i, I believed in myself more that's amazing and i think that that was really something that i lacked really mm -hmm. before and then doing the uh the project really 
I believed in myself at that point. Yeah. That's really great. And it was the first time I've gotten to choreograph for someone in the wheelchair. And and I was I was nervous because like so much <laughs> I'm very leg heavy. I do a lot. <laughs> I'm not great integrating my arms. This is something if you've ever worked on choreography, we're working on. Um, <laughs> but it it gave me this amazing challenge and and you were so honest with and you're so like you were so ready to work and you were so excited to like Tell me what works and what doesn't, and we got to create in a, such a different way than I've ever gotten to. So I want to thank you for this experience. Like it was, awesome. it was so cool and such an eye opening and such a wonderful learning experience. Yeah, no, I had a great time. Like I, I, I kid you not. When I went to the dance call, I'm like, I did not know what to expect from it. I'm like, I really hope that they'll integrate me well into <laughs> the dance call because I've never, I've never done one sure. before. Um, but um, you guys were really accommodating, and it really brought out my uh, my skills as a dancer and what I could bring to the table. And mm -hmm. yeah, I'm really grateful for that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, George. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Give it up for George, folks. Thank you. Thank you. We love you, George. <laughs> Right. Our next performer, I actually met doing a Pepsi commercial like four years ago. Yeah, yeah. I think we actually, he just got here late, classic. <laughs> and I, we haven't actually talked yet, but we did a Pepsi commercial together that is uh, still sitting on a shelf somewhere. We'll never see the light of day. <laughs> R.I.P. that bio check. Do you know what I mean? She was really I looking forward to the money. You were all in a boat or something, right? <laughs> You were no, a choir in a boat? It was a choir on a dinghy <laughs> <laughs> with uh, the life jackets under the choir ropes. Turns out that's a health code violation because if that thing goes up, it just strangles you. <laughs> Sore. Probably best. No, but we definitely don't need unions. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. Unions are not great. Anyway, that was not true for everyone at home. I w that was not true. Unions are good. Anyway. <laughs> um. So I know him from a bad Pepsi commercial. You probably know him from the Toronto cast of Come From Away. <laughs> hey! Uh, shall we take a look at Kyle Brown's work here? Yes! <laughs> yes. <laughs> there are three things in life you can't avoid. Death, taxes, and other people's expectations of who and what you should be. Yeah, being a black man has its challenges. Yes, I've been pulled over, frisked, searched, and detained for no good reason. Tossing gay and Trinidadian and life gets real interesting. But that's not what defines me. I, we are so much more than our traumas. Our stories are rich, layered, and complex. So now that black is in and we matter, when do we get to tell those stories? Too old. Disabled. Box tick. Uh -uh. It's 20. Quota. Too old. Kyle Brown, everyone. Hi, I'm Kyle. so sorry. I didn't realize we were turning looks this evening. I know, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, and I've, I've forgotten something. Kyle, can you please describe yourself? Yes. Thank you so much. I am a black man. I am wearing a kind of like a velour baseball cap, kind of. <laughs> kind a sheer <laughs> top with some floral prints, some cargo <laughs> pants, and uh, some shoes. Oh, and uh, like a watch and a couple rings and pearls and a chain and some <laughs> earrings. <laughs> I like jewelry, but don't worry, it's cheap. I ain't got it like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Kyle, I love you so much. <laughs> I, I'm so glad you were a part of this um, this Thank journey you. and this uh, piece, especially like I, I feel very strongly about black performers and advocating for black voices, and particularly now I just there's there's su such a um, you know uh, in the last two years we've seen this like huge, huge uh, you know way of thinking and in terms of inclusivity, um, and y you know it's really important for for us to be represented well and not just the flavor of the month or, oh, we're in now. And so it was really important for us to have that message and I was mm. really glad that you were able to bring that. So thank you for that. Thank you for having <laughs> me. <laughs> and you might have also seen Kyle mm. in a Musicals Reimagined project. Do you want to talk a bit about that? Oh, yes. Um, yeah. Kyle was a, a starred in uh, Black Jesus. Uh, it's a reimagining of Gethsemane from Jesus Christ Superstar. And uh, you were just, you were fantastic and, you know, 
I love your work. <laughs> I'm a big fan. <laughs> and I believe we're going to be doing a crowdfunding thing later on. We're so just keep your yeah, eyes peeled. Yeah, we're doing a crowdfunding yeah. thing. You know, we'll GoFundMe launch for a Black Jesus in concert uh, in October. So I'm uh, just keep your eyes peeled and, uh, yeah, and hopefully uh, we'll send your money to place. We'll make it happen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, can you tell us about your process and uh, yeah, tell us about your journey. Yeah, so um, I come from a very kind of religious um, upbringing, um, very conservative Christianity. I mm -hmm. was on track to study to become a minister before I became an actor. So I spent uh, about four years in a Bible college, you know, studying the Bible and such, and then realized that that wasn't for me. Also, they had no place for uh, gay or queer people at all in the, that organization, so I left that. Um, but while I was there, I used to do a lot of music in the church. You know, music's really big there, uh, gospel music, that kind of thing. So I knew that, you know, singing was my first love and, and that I wanted to do that. And um, I had done some musical theater in high school. And uh, a high school teacher of mine reached out to me. This was probably about eight years after I had uh, graduated high school. And they were doing a community theater show. They were doing Les Mis. And uh, they asked me to come do it. And I thought, you know what, let me go do it. And uh, immediately was like, oh, yeah, I love this. <laughs> like, I forgot. <laughs> um, and so I just kind of continued on that track um, and have been just trying to, trying to, you know, bring a perspective, um, face some challenges. It's been interesting, you know, being a black man in this industry, um, being a gay man in this industry. Um, there's a lot of challenges uh, that we face. But, um, you know, I think that things are changing. I think that uh, we're having conversations. We're having, like, things like this. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody on stage, mm -hmm. uh, musicals reimagined, people bringing fresh perspectives to theater is what we really, really need, and I'm glad to see that it's happening. Uh, that doesn't mean we're where we need to be, and conversations continue to, hap uh, to happen and need to continue to happen. And, um, yeah, mm -hmm. that's cool. That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that, too. Did you have anything? I'm blown away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I should have really thought about this before, before this moment, shouldn't I have? Um, we've been busy this week. Um, <laughs> yeah. Kyle Brown. Yeah. <laughs> Favorite tropical fruit. Um, no, okay. Mango. No, no, no. I, I must have something. Mango. Can't sing. <laughs> so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Listen, I, we could talk about mangoes all night. I love mangoes. <laughs> Come on. It's my next tattoo. <laughs> hopefully. Okay, here's, here we go. What's your yeah. dream role? Outside of all the things, yeah. what's your dream role? Um, I don't really know, to be honest. I, I don't know that I have, like, I don't know if it's been created, mm. you know? Um, I've looked around at the roles that are out there, and I and I don't know that, of course, there are many that I want to play, but I don't know that it's, that I have a dream role. Mm -hmm. That might be something that is yet to be made, that mm -hmm. I might have to make. I don't mm -hmm. know what that is, but... What, um, what in the world, when you see theater, what is something that, like, what I, what do you need there to be for it to, like, Oh, I need theater to be in general, in general, more inclusive. Um, I need it to be more diverse. Not only the people on the stage, but the people who attend yes. theater. Mm -hmm. uh, listen, my family is like, "What are you like theater? <laughs> we never went to theater shows." You know, I've been learning this all kind of as I've grown up. Um, I did some theater in high school, and then it was just me. Like there wasn't musical theater playing in my house, and we couldn't afford to go to theater. I think we did go see Joseph though when it was here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but that was like, that's pretty much it. The one show that I ever yeah. saw, right? Yeah. So um, uh, typically theater audiences are very white and a certain age. Um, and I think there's a lot of reasons for that. The content as well as the, the price points of theater and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to see like a lot more of myself reflected in theater um, to show you know, that, that there's something for us to come see, that we can see ourselves. Mm. Um, I need it to be like, yeah, just more, more inclusive of all that, first of all. And uh, I would also say that um, the stories that we tell, okay, sorry, sorry, I'm trying not to go on a tangent, <laughs> try not to go on a tangent. No tangents, <laughs> go for it. Listen, as a black man watching, whether it's theater, whether it's film, whether it's television, um, we see ourselves depicted in a certain light quite mm -hmm. frequently. Yep. And now that we are talking more inclusivity, oftentimes, you know, as we saw on the screen, my, my name was Box Tick. Um, 
and it feels like we're just ticking boxes oftentimes. Mm -hmm. uh, like now we've got to meet a quota, now we've got our diversity you know, quota met, there's a black guy, let's throw him in the cast, but there can only be one. And if there's more than one and it's an all black cast, it's always some kind of story about our struggle, yeah. which I don't want to diminish. I think it's important that we know where we came from and that these struggles do happen. Mm -hmm. But I also think it's important for us to be able to imagine uh, something better. Um, I think it's important for us to be imagined, able to imagine that we can do anything. Yeah. And so I would love to see more shows featuring black artists, featuring racialized artists, um, any kind of you know, minority group um, that is really imaginative and that really allows us to just kind of explore because that's how we really get to grow. Life imitates art, but art also, you know, imi art imitates life, but life also imitates art. Mm -hmm. And when we can see something, then we can make it real, yeah. you know? So. Um, I just want to see a little bit more imagination Coming in through. our storytelling. Love it. Love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple of vodka sodas, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> we love to see it. Thank you so much, Calgary. Thank, thank you so much. Thank it's you. great. And you guys are wonderful. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Let's keep the party going then. <laughs> uh, our next uh, performer, her name is Lizzie Song. Lizzie is a first generation Taiwanese indigenous multidisciplinary performer. Come through. Who may or may not, can neither confirm nor deny, <laughs> maybe producing some kind of podcast with everybody on stage Who in knows? the near future. Oh. <laughs> Hard to say for sure. But either way, let's take a look at the clip, shall we? Something that continues to surprise people is that regardless of how hard I try, I'm actually not capable of speaking for every Asian person who ever lived. Uh-uh. You see, when you're the only POC in the cast, it can be a lot of pressure to represent an entire race. Look. We need to keep having these conversations. We need to push that needle forward, but honestly, I sure can't wait for the day I'm seen for what I really am, an artist. Too old. Disabled. Box tick. Uh -uh. Lose 20. Quota. Too old. Disabled. Box tick. Uh -uh. Lose 20. Quota. I'm walking everywhere with an artist. This is it. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> Hi, darling. How are you? Great, you look gorgeous. You? Thank you so much. You look gorgeous. Please tell us all about yourself. Please. Oh, my God. Hello, everyone. <laughs> my name is Lizzie Song. I use she, her pronouns, mm -hmm. and I am a East Asian fatty girly. <laughs> I'm wearing <laughs> yellow and green and orange and blue and shoes that don't fit. So, hello. <laughs> I'm living for these shoes, though. They're so, so cute. cute. They're Kate Spade. <gasps> <gasps> they were $9. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I, I thought, you, first of all, you nailed it. You slayed <laughs> it uh, in this piece. It was so fantastic to work with you. I mean, and we'd worked together um, before on 9 to 5, and just the leaps and bounds that you've, you've done, it's, it, it's incredible. You've grown so much as a performer and, a, and as an artist. And yeah, I'm just so proud of you. Aww. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. You feel like a proud I mom. think what's so amazing about this yeah. piece is you're so evidently so comfortable in your own body. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you were so ready to do this and tell your story. So. What got you here? How did how do we get here to this day? Oh my goodness! I'm like I've seen people say the exact same thing. I don't know what to say next. <laughs> um, well, I started playing piano and dancing when I was like four years old. It was really disciplined. It was strict. It was that classic little life. Um, but um, it really made me fall in love with storytelling, and I just I knew I had to be an actor. And my dad was always like follow your passions, follow your passions, follow your passions. And I was like, I'm going to be an actor. And then he was like, not those passions. <laughs> but um, we're cool now. He, my parents are so supportive. I love them. Shout out. Hi. Yes, um, yes, <laughs> <laughs> um, so then I decided to just go to theater school. Um, got a master's degree in musical theater. I worked in musical theater, sketch comedy, devised physical theater, I've worked as an arts administrator, an actor, um, that's my resume, <laughs> um, a producer, hi, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I just love doing as much as I can in the arts, and I'm so passionate about community and bringing people together, and I just think art is like the perfect way to do that, and it's the most fun that I ever have, so why don't I do that forever, and 
meet all my cool new friends and <laughs> we can just have fun and yeah. tell stories. Yeah, and I think we also need to give a shout out to your co-star, that blue sparkly romper that you're in. Hey. Oh my God, shout out <laughs> Kathleen. Yes, Kathleen Black unfortunately has a sick on. child this evening so she couldn't join us, but oh. Kathleen, 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 my goodness. It's yes. so good. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a serious question because I love serious questions. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, but like seriously, like what was the turning point for you? What was what was that that mm. that spark that you that you said like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna show up for myself and like you know really um, believe in yourself and and do the things. Yeah, we were sitting. Um, it was 2020. It was June of 2020, and I was seeing so many of my black friends struggling to find their voice, and I thought where am I in this journey and how can I help? So I decided to really band together with the racialized people from my theater schools and we kind of talked about what radical changes we could make for the students currently and how we can kind of pave a pathway for that. And then I started looking at my own artistic journey and I was realizing how many rooms I wasn't feeling safe in, how many places that I was the only person of color within like a kilometer radius, which is just not the ticket, you guys. It's <laughs> so lonely out there. So then I was trying to reach out to the mentors that I do had and have from school and they were all white males. And I was like, you guys don't know what I need to hear. And I wasn't, this isn't serving me. So then I just said, the only person I really have is myself and the people that are around me. Who can I latch on to? Who can I find? And we all just kind of found our voices together. Mm -hmm. And everyone I meet, it's just so incredible to like take something that I admire of them and like bring it into myself. And all of that has just kind of slowly been able to build my confidence and like speak out as an artist. And find my own artistic voice and it's projects like this and it's working with creative teams like everyone here and just to like prove that you don't have to work that hard to know that you are enough mm -hmm. oh my god that was so cheesy <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're a star you're a star and you know it Thanks and i can't wait uh, rumors might be confirmed uh, that uh there's a new podcast coming out called Theater in the Round, produced by Lizzie Zong. Hey. So look out for that. Hi. Thanks so much, Lizzie. You're the best. Yes. What a star. Give it up for Lizzie Zong, everyone. You just went ahead and, and like said the name of the podcast, huh? Well, you oopsie. just spilled the beans. I've okay. also said it on podcast like six months ago, so. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Cats out of the bag. <laughs> uh, apparently, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, what's new? <laughs> Okay, um, our <laughs> next performer uh, is a friend of mine who I actually think I met working with Greg and Sasha doing hmm. Legally Blonde uh, in 2020, the last pre-pandemic thing many of us did. Shut down the city. Shut down the damn city, didn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> I was asking Rachel uh, before the show what kind of credits she wanted me to talk about, how she wanted me to introduce her, and we've decided the best way to do that is uh, to talk about the contract we never got to do. Um, uh, during the pandemic, we were supposed to do a production of Legally Blonde. No, we did that. Yep. We were supposed wow. to do Glad it was memorable. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to do ah. Matilda. We were supposed to do a production of Matilda, and I was Trunchbull, which was a rude uh, callback email to get when you wanted Miss Honey. I did, I did, I was hurt at first, but then I was excited. Uh, I do think Rachel was also hurt when she got the understudy of Trunchbull. <laughs> and then I had to call out for a weekend, and when I texted her the, the news about that, she said, fuck no. <laughs> so Sorry, stream. Sorry, stream. Sorry for the folks at home. You can bleep that on the repeat, huh? Lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, Rachel Mundy, everybody. <laughs> We've had it come. Anyone who's grown up in a small town knows there's a danger of coming down with a case of big fish, small pond. Listen, obviously it's important for people to prepare music theater kids for the harsh realities of the showbiz world. But there's a fine line between keeping it real and keeping us down. This lesson became painfully clear when someone I looked up to my whole life said, Hey kid, want to play your dream role? You just got to drop 20 pounds. Face. 
The worst part is, comments like these are well-intended. But when people say things like, Wow, you look amazing. Did you lose weight? It just confirms that the before wasn't good enough. So for all you teachers, directors, hell, citizens of the world, be impeccable with your word. Because things you say might, will have a lasting impact. Oh, and to that bulldozer who told me to drop 20 pounds? Musical theater already has a Mama Rose. We're good. Too old. Disabled. Box tick. Rachel, tell us about yourself. Hi, my name's Rachel Mundy. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a white woman with dyed red hair. <laughs> Not natural, sadly. Out yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, blue eyes. Uh, I am wearing a white long sleeve top, some brown leather pants, and some tall ass boots. Love it. Uh, Rachel Mundy. Rachel. Yeah, what's up? How you do? How you feeling going uh, going out into the <laughs> who slept this week? Not me. <laughs> Rachel Mundy. Let's try that again. Um, I know. Before we put this out, you were you were a little stressed. <sighs> you were a little stressed. Do you want to talk about that a bit? Like what's? <sighs> yeah. Wow. Where do we start? Um, I haven't really seen myself on film a lot, mm. for one. So that was pretty scary, just because I've really done mostly musical theater. Um, so just being able to see myself on film was stressful, just the idea of it. And it to not be a very close um, close up. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna see my entire body from f you know, f heel to head. And I don't know the poses I made. I don't know what I was doing. I have no control over that other than what I did that day, however many months ago now. Mm. Um, so that just kind of ate at me a little bit. and. Uh, yeah, the day I saw it, I kind of went through like a lot of emotions. I um, I felt just like scared, like, and I hated that almost. I really did because I wanted to be so excited, but it was so nerve wracking and so vulnerable, like on a level I had never been before. So, um, the video coming out that morning, I kind of like got the notification that I was tagged in something. <laughs> I was like, oh no, <laughs> and I knew it was coming. And I was like, I know, like this is my day. We just had uh huh, <laughs> and now it's me. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, I kind of had to like sit with it and, and um, breathe and talk to my friends. And um, then while I started to like honestly get some notifications and I was like, oh, people are like, okay, people are commenting, people are liking. And then eventually I just felt so much love and so much support. And I was like, okay, I think it might be okay. And then I watched it and I was like, okay, yeah, I think it's okay. And then I watched it a few more times. I was like, okay. <laughs> okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> well, and I think what was so cool is that so many people, regardless of the yeah. body that you're in, related to the story. Every mm -hmm. single person in this room, I'm sure, has been told that they need to lose weight. Yeah. Um, in this industry, it's 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 the default. It's um it's it's what we aspire to it's for trash. some reason. It's trash. <laughs> it's hot garbage. And and this story, like this, is a topic that does not get discussed. Mm -hmm. And um, I know on the day we did a lot of work to like get there, and, and it's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot what you had to do. So. Thanks so much for doing that for yeah. us. It's it's especially for uh, the everybody on stage community. It's there is no representation like this. So, mm -hmm. it's trailblazing shit over here, folks. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Want to talk about trailblazing, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> the only way I could do that was from your guys' amazing and real support in this company. That's it. So, Thank back you. to you. Thanks, <laughs> no, it was it was really cool because um, you know obviously we worked together before, and so it was really nice to see you you know, again, blossom and be the fierce queen and artist that you <laughs> are. Um, but I in those interview process, in, in the in interview process, you know, we had asked a lot of questions and I think one of them was kind of why now? And, you know, you, you shared a lot, a lot of stuff. So I would like to kind of revisit that question sure. of like, why now? Why is it important now? <sighs> Jeez. <laughs> the hard cutting questions from yes. Sasha. Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know, I guess it, kind of through this whole pandemic nonsense that's happened in, in crazy time, um, I think we all just kind of had some time alone for the first time and to kind of think and reflect. And um, yeah, a lot of stuff um, came to light for me. And I think there's just more represent. I, I made a point to follow more people that I feel represented me. And as I did that, it was almost like little light bulbs came on mm -hmm. of like, oh, I'm being a jerk to myself. Mm. And um, 
it still happens on a daily basis of things I almost like remember that I've like blacked out <laughs> in a weird yeah. way. I'm like, oh my God, I did that. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, and then I think through that road of, of just realization, I've had people reach out to me and be like, hey, like, you seem like you're doing really good and you look good and you, you seem like you feel good. And I was like, yeah, I do. Yeah. Shit. Sorry. Yeah. Bleep. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, yeah, then, then this and your company came to be and I saw the project and I knew immediately I had to submit for it. And um, I think I just was ready. I was ready mm-hmm. to, to tell the story and to um, just be a nicer person to myself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? I think what people don't realize is it's not the weight, it's the emotional weight of carrying oh around God. the society's <laughs> expe- expectations. Yeah. And once you shed that, ooh, yeah. baby, you're yeah. free. You know? yeah, you th- you're free, yeah. you're free, you're free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you were so vulnerable in this mm-hmm. piece. And I just really, I'm so grateful to you for Thank doing that. You. Thank Give it up for Rachel, you everyone. Too. Thank you. Last clip we have for tonight, uh, the performer unfortunately isn't here. The performers, Carolyn Bailey, uh, they are a trans non-binary collaborative theater artist who is currently working right now at the Stratford Festival as a production assistant. Oops. (laughs) They're busy. Yeah. (laughs) They're busy. So let's take a look at their work, shall we? I was pretty pumped when I got an offer to work for an exciting and inclusive theater company. Being newly out as non-binary, I figured there'd be the odd bump along the way. But to find myself in rehearsal having to give a Gender 101 lesson to a room of cis actors was disappointing, to say the least. Now, I know everyone's trying to figure all of this out, including me. But you gotta meet me halfway here. Take the time to educate yourselves. Because honestly, trailblazing can be exhausting. Sometimes, you just want the trail to be a paved fucking road. Too old. Disabled. Uh, uh, Give it up for Carolyn, everyone. Yeah. Well, hey, in the meantime, actually, can we all shift this way a little bit? Tama, come close to me. (laughs) Thank you so much. Let's all scooch on the camera. Folks, I want you to give it up here for Tama Martin. (laughs) Woo! Tama, would you mind introducing yourself for us? My name is Tama Martin. I'm a black woman with her hair up in a pineapple and a scarf she got today. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> a black dress and some purple shoes. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. Lovely. Let's keep it going. <laughs> Hi, I'm Haley Belaz. My pronouns are she, her. I'm a white woman with brown, medium length hair in a white blazer, a black skirt, fishnet tights, and some chunky boots. Yay. Oh, and May. Hello, my name is May Miyazawa. My pronouns are she, her. I am an Asian woman. I am wearing black and white top. (laughs) I'm also wearing a black leather skirt, and my hair is dark and curly slash wavy. Yes. (laughs) Give it up for our dancers, folks. So, I don't know if you noticed, but these people learned a whole lot of choreography. A whole lot. <laughs> that you won't actually see in the short film at any point. Um, I mean, you'll see c- brief moments, but um, it was so exciting that we got to put out these little, s- we call them the social posts. Um, these social posts to highlight these amazingly talented performers. Mm-hmm. So, give it up for them one more time. <laughs> Would any of you like to talk about your process? Get us started, Jamie. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, well, besides loving Greg and Sasha with all my heart, <laughs> I saw both of, both of their names attached to the project and instantly saying, yes, um, yes, I'm going to audition. <laughs> <laughs> and even, yes, I'll audition, even if I don't get it, like, you know, um, whew, being a black immigrant woman from the Caribbean, Caribbean island of St. Kitts, um, with a, with an accent, um, not always being what people a- assume a black woman should be. Mm-hmm. I know a thing or two about being silenced mm-hmm. and being made to feel like this this is your life. This is what you should be. This is how you should act. These are the, these are the experiences that you should have. Or you have an accent. Okay, you're probably not smart. Um, meanwhile, I'm, I was like the island scholar. 
That's how I came to Canada on a scholarship. <laughs> but then to this day, I still get treated like I'm dumb because I have an accent. And people think that you're naive. They can take advantage of you when you go into the Apple store and that kind of thing. So I don't let them. And I've learned that from, you know, just like years of just natural growth and the people that have come into my life and organizations like everybody on stage. Um, I was more than happy. I was thrilled to do, they didn't even have to pay me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Actress I was good. Good. <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> it was, I mean, I would do it again, mm -hmm. this project, just to see George and Carolyn and Lizzie and Rachel and Trish. Oops. <laughs> and Kyle. <laughs> yeah, just to see them <laughs> shine and <laughs> And Kyle, oh <laughs> Jesus, no, no, Kyle, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't, <clears throat> even, even this is intimidating because mm. I usually don't get to be the, I'm okay being, you know, sitting down and just sipping my drink, you know, and just watching. So, yeah, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be in Cell Block 10 where we imagined and be here tonight and talking into a microphone. Yes, yes. 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 Yeah. So Thanks, Greg, Sasha, everybody, <laughs> my fellow ladies, yes. my dancers. Yes, gorgeous. And then, Haley, you were going on a bit of a journey, right, when we started this project. Oh, yes. Yeah, do you want to talk was. about that a bit? Yeah, so I saw this audition notice um, and submitted for the video and a, a little context. I spent 10 years with an eating disorder um, triggered by growing up in a dance studio. Um, classic story, but yeah, so sent 10 year, spent 10 years uh, with body dysmorphia, disordered eating all through theater school and the beginning of my professional career um, and didn't tell anybody, didn't tell my parents, didn't tell my friends. Um, and when I saw this audition notice, I had spent a year in therapy, uh, really kind of working through things starting to talk about it, starting to come to terms with it, um, starting to be nicer to myself. And I saw this project and I was like, this feels right, but I think I should tell my parents first. Mm. So I had sat down and talked to my parents a week before um, I had my, my call back, I guess, my interview. And that was the first time I had talked out loud about my experience. Um, and so, yeah, it was very much at the beginning of, I guess, my public talking about disordered eating and talking about eating disorders outside of my very close uh, community. So yeah, it was, a, it was a big journey definitely coming into this, but this could not have been a more perfect project to re-enter the industry as a new version of myself. Mm. Um, I felt like a fierce ass dancer. Hey, and you were. Yes. You. Um, but also I felt like I could be a dancer and that I could take my new body to me and I could I could still dance and I could get hired as a dancer. Um, yeah, it was it was a incredible experience and a lot of emotions about it still. But yeah, um, very, very safe space and definitely the, the right project for me at that time. It kind of all lined up really well. Thank you for sharing that with us. That's oh. yeah. That's, that's how I felt um, throughout the process from like the first day of auditioning and you know even like preparing to audition to the last day of shooting and even today it never felt like I had to be someone else so that that's I don't know new to me I think and to a lot of um, the other performers that were there that day um, yeah, I mean, I'm also, I came to Canada eight years ago now. Um, I was in high school, and I just kind of, I didn't move with my family. I just kind of decided that was my own decision to kind of get out and pursue art. Um, and that was definitely the right decision. But at the same time, I feel like when you say Asian people in the theater community or even like any art community, you see a lot of second, third generation Asian people that, that knew how to speak English from day one. And um, 
obviously like struggles. Like I did, I don't know their struggle in their childhood, but there were other struggles that I faced that aren't really talked about. Um, so when you know, I I really appreciate what you said in this. Every everyone obviously, but what Lizzie said in this project, I was I was so like happy that there was someone that talked about that. Um, yeah, but you know. It took me like I didn't speak any English when I was when I came here, um, and I just wanted to. Oh my God, my voice just came. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. I'm not crying. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So it's yeah. No, no what? Um, yeah. I just I'm just grateful for this community, and I always feel like I'm auditioning and I'm like feel like, you know, even if I get a call back, even if I get a gig, it's not because of my talent, because I look different, mm -hmm. and, you know, they just wanted a diversity hire. <laughs> um, that's, like, something that, that get, is, it like, at the you know, it's always there, um, even if they, like, tell me, no, like, you, you got it because of, like, this. I always feel like, yeah, but I'm the only Indian person here. <laughs> um, so... But with this one, even though, you know, obviously they want, you guys wanted to represent different um, minority groups. So it was definitely a factor. It never really bothered me. Um, and it was just, you know, I was here because I was wanted and I felt wanted. Um, I feel like everyone kind of felt the same way and that was really powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, wow. Whoa, 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 thank you, May. Thank you, thank you. Is, is Stephanie in the chat by any chance? Is she in the room? Is she there? No, okay, but I just want to shout out Stephanie Visconti, who's the associate choreographer on this project. Yes. So we rehearsed this very strangely. I worked with these dancers for, because actor works in half days, we worked a four hour chunk where I taught them all of the choreography that they would do in those six minute videos that you've seen. And then I worked with each of the six performers individually. And then we had a day to put it all back together. Um, and so we just had to trust and believe that the choreography that the performer was doing up front matched with what they were doing behind. <laughs> it was kind of a nightmare, but um, <laughs> it, it wouldn't have been possible without Stephanie Visconti, who is a star among stars. So yeah. I just want to give it up for Stephanie. All right, <laughs> All right and then, um, hey Chelsea, what's next? Oh, oh wait, I think we might watch a little film. I think, oh. hey, should we watch a short film? Yeah. All right. Before we do that, though, I just want to put a little seed in everyone's mind. After we watch the film, we're going to have an opportunity to have a little Q&A with Sasha and Greg here. So all of you in the room, start as you're watching this, maybe think of some questions. And you, too, at home on the live stream. How you doing? How you been? Missed me, didn't you? Anyway, I'll stop uh, winking in the camera now. Let's watch a movie. <laughs> Everyone, this is your five minute call. Five minute call to the top of Act One. Oh, and happy opening. Too old. Disabled. Box tick? Uh uh. Lose 20. Quota. Too old. Disabled. Box tick? And now. The uh, Stellar Six present lose 20. their rendition of the Cell Block Quota. Tango. Too old. Disabled. Box tick. Uh uh. Lose 20. Quota. Too old. Disabled. Box tick. Uh -uh. Lose 20. Quota. We've had it coming. We've had it coming. The chance to thrill you and amaze. Now that we've seen it, you really mean it. Or are we just a passing phase? Too old. Disabled. Box uh -uh. tick. Lose 20. Quota. Too old. Disabled. Box uh -uh. tick. Lose 20. Quota. I was 32 and I had my first kid. 
At the time, that was pretty young for a gal in the biz. But what can I say? I wanted a family. So here I am, back in the race in my 60s, and still kicking. Literally. I still got a fan kick on both sides. Trouble is, the industry only sees people like me as two things. Young and hot, or old and not. But it ain't that black and white. There's a whole lot of gray. Not on my head, of course. Genetics. And sure, some things aren't what they used to be. So would it kill them to send sides that aren't in a microscopic font? I guess what I'm trying to say is, if art's supposed to imitate life, shouldn't it actually do that? Cause baby, this is life. I've had it coming. I've had it coming. I got a fire you can't deny. Now that you've met me, don't you forget me. Cause there is more than what meets the eye. In 2019, I left theater school as the only person I know in a wheelchair to graduate from a performing arts program. But hey, I've always had a knack for being number one. Since grad, I've had a decent run. You booked it became three of my favorite words. But, spoil alert, the parts always seem to revolve around my chair. Why can't I just be a hero? Lover, father, brother, hell. How about a gay James Bond? I've had it coming. I've had it coming. Come on and open up your mind. Yeah, you can change it. Just rearrange it. We're the bridge for a redefine. There are three things in life you can't avoid. Death, taxes, and other people's expectations of who and what you should be. Yeah, being a black man has its challenges. Yes, I've been pulled over, frisked, searched, and detained for no good reason. Tossing gay and Trinidadian and life gets real interesting. But that's not what defines me. I. We are so much more than our traumas. Our stories are rich, layered, and complex. So now that black is in and we matter, when do we get to tell those stories? Something that continues to surprise people is that regardless of how hard I try, I'm actually not capable of speaking for every Asian person who ever lived. Uh-uh. You see, when you're the only POC in the cast, it can be a lot of pressure to represent an entire race. Look, we need to keep having these conversations. We need to push that needle forward, but honestly, I sure can't wait for the day I'm seen for what I really am. An artist. Hey, can I ask you something? Are you done with that? Uh-uh. Anyone who's grown up in a small town knows there's a danger of coming down with a case of big fish, small pond. Listen, obviously it's important for people to prepare music theater kids for the harsh realities of the showbiz world. But there's a fine line between keeping it real and keeping us down. This lesson became painfully clear when someone I looked up to my whole life said, Hey kids, want to play your dream role? You just gotta drop 20 pounds. The worst part is, comments like these are well intended. But when people say things like, Wow, you look amazing. Did you lose weight? It just confirms that the before wasn't good enough. So for all you teachers, directors, hell, citizens of the world, be impeccable with your word. Because things you say might, will have a lasting impact. Oh, and to that bulldozer who told me to drop 20 pounds? Musical theater already has a mama rose. We're good. I've had it come. I've had it come. She's had it come. To finally feel to finally this feel is, enough. is enough. Let's hear you shout Let's it. Hear you shout Be it. all about Be it. All about Consideration, it ain't that tough. I was pretty pumped when I got an offer to work for an exciting and inclusive theater company. Being newly out as non binary, I figured there'd be the odd bump along the way. But to find myself in rehearsal having to give a Gender 101 lesson to a room of cis actors was disappointing, to say the least. 
Now, I know everyone's trying to figure all of this out, including me. But you gotta meet me halfway here. Take the time to educate yourselves. Because honestly, trailblazing can be exhausting. Sometimes, you just want the trail to be a paved fucking road. Just hear that drum, 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 drum. Yes, hear that drum. How's about a gay James Bond? Rich, layered, complex. The only POC. We already got him on a road. Paved fucking road. Too old. Disabled. Box tick. Uh uh. Lose 20. Quota. George Alavizos? Okay, um, Lizzie? Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm Lizzie. Holy Hannah. Holy. <laughs> I'm sitting she's, down. She's a I'm light one. Yeah. Sick of, sick of standing. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Wow. That was fantastic. Thank you. Let's give it up for all the performers yeah. in the room. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. I also just wanted to point out. Uh, Give it up for Andrew Ahmed, who hey. was our DOP hey. editor and colorist on this project. Woo! Sitting next to them is Sarah, who is our production manager on this project. Hey. Give it up for Paige Foskett, who was our assistant director on this project. And then Jess Gordon, sitting in the back there, who is our set PA, also COVID manager. Hey. Turning your attention over here, we've got Janice Niles, who was script supervisor to the stars. Hey. And of course, Lucas Vernon, who did all the other things. <laughs> <laughs> did I miss anyone? I. Sorry? Chelsea! Uh, Chelsea's here! Chelsea, who is our focus puller, also hey. first assistant camera. What a star. What a star. <laughs> Fixing Terror Deck every three seconds. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Wow. Um, so, if you folks, they're in the room as well. So, if you have any questions about like how this happens, Feel free. I'm gonna get the ball rolling with a couple questions here. I'm gonna take a cue from Sasha and start with a serious one. <laughs> um, Greg, what's your favorite tropical fruit? Oh, that is <laughs> such a good question. You're a comedian, huh? Mm, I um, try. Actually, mango. I fully agree with Kyle. Excellent work. <laughs> mango forever. I uh, I started eating pineapple for the first time in my life during the pandemic. I thought I didn't like it. Turns out it's actually very good. So take that for what you will, folks. <laughs> um, um, no, but actually, the final image in the film is obviously incredibly impactful. Um, Sasha, I, my question for you is a genuinely a serious one. <laughs> in that moment, you, there is a, a sense of isolation, right? What is a moment in your career when you have felt that isolation and that has inspired you to mm. move forward? That's a great question, uh, Chelsea. I don't know if I'm ready I get the pineapple question and you get that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm know, more uh, interested in what Sasha has to say <laughs> anyway, <of course>. so. <laughs> um, 
Well, first of all, I just want to mention, like, Matt Murray, you're a genius. I, I loved working with you. We came up, it was great because we got to collaborate on how it would com come together. So you were more than just an adapter. You were just, you know, I just wanted to point that yes. out. So thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> um, so for me, like, I feel like I've spent my entire life trying to kind of keep up. And for me, kind of as a black woman growing up in Montreal and just kind of trying to break through trying to break into music theater, I have to work 10 times harder than anybody else mm -hmm. just to be seen or to be considered or, you know. And I feel like, yeah, I, I really, I, I did not know what I wanted. <laughs> I did not know this is what I wanted, to do work that uh, is, is inspiring, to do work that, that I can actually thrive in and, and I can be the person, uh, you know, in charge or leading or whatever. Um, so for me, you know, growing up was really isolating because, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was, even though I was eager as a young thing growing up in, in theater, you know, I was eager to get the shows, I was eager to, to impress the directors and things like that. And, you know, I was happy to be the token. I was happy to be, you know, uh, black girl number two. I was happy to do those things because I was stepping into what I thought was my career and this is what you do and this is the, the natural order of events but then realized like that was isolating for me. That m th those feelings of just feeling like I had, to I had to complete someone else's vision, that was isolating for me. Mm -hmm. Until I started to like really start to see what I wanted to be in this industry and what I wanted to do. And, and honestly, like I, I've been in the wrong places. I've been in the wrong places for so long and I just realized it wasn't about, um, it was more than being in the wrong places about meeting the right people. So when this guy came along, I was just like, wow, I, I actually, I met my match. <laughs> I met someone who dreams bigger than me and pushes me to dream bigger. And, you know, just the, you know, what we've accomplished, like, in the last few years is just insane. And I'm just so, I'm so grateful for myself for pulling myself out of that isolation. Mm. Yes. Uh, it's interesting that you talk about um, being happy to be the token for a moment. We, Greg and I have had some of these moments when we're working on uh, Why Are We Not Fat, where I'll make a fat joke, but the, ba uh, the wrong kind of mm -hmm. fat joke, where I'm laughing at myself and not with the room. Greg, hmm. here's a real serious question okay. for you. <laughs> Do you feel like you have to be 10 steps ahead of the people you work with in terms of your journey of self-love? Do you feel like you have to have done three years of therapy mm -hmm. before you can direct an actor or write choreo or, or I is, is that necessary in your process as a performer? I think very early on in my career, like at school, I, I started, I learned very quickly that um, people don't expect anything from me. Um, mm. I, oh, that's real, though. yeah, I yeah, that in my heart. yeah, <laughs> I, um, when I went to theater school, I started dancing when I was four, thanks mom and dad, um, and I was put in beginner dance because I looked different than everyone else who was in a higher level of dance. I danced with people who had never danced before, and, um, they forced me to take my beginner classes. I asked if I could join the higher level classes, which were in the afternoon, so I ended up dancing 36 hours a week just to get the training that I was trying to get. That sounds exhausting. Yeah, and then when I graduated theater school, my very first audition out, um, it was like right before we finished school, and I went to a dance call for a cruise line, which shall remain nameless. Um, is, it's is Disney, is it Disney? <laughs> no, it was not Disney, it was- uh, Norwegian? It was one you don't want to be on. Royal Caribbean. <laughs> It's the same room. You can say it. Yeah, we're definitely not on the internet. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, I, I did the four and a half hour dance call. They sat us all down, the seven of us that made it through. And I got held back after the fact and got told that I should send pictures when I'm shirtless ready. And then the second I do, I will get on a cruise ship. And I spent a year after that audition training my body and not training my craft. And I went back the same, the next year. I My mother <laughs> took photos of me in a dress shirt, looking as small as I possibly could, um, and set those away and didn't get a response. Um, so I learned very quickly that my body was not one that should be on stage. Um, and so I started choreographing um, because I learned that I can still create beautiful movement and share my joy and my love of dance and storytelling through other bodies that are a bit more palatable to society currently. Um, and uh, now I'm 32 and I'm finally 
coming into my own, and I'm finally I'm getting my first actor job or my first equity job, and I'm choreographed my first actor production, and things are finally happening because I shed, I stopped caring what everyone else thought, and I I got out of that space. So. I don't know. What was your question? Who knows? Um, it's probably not relevant. <laughs> we, do, we do have a question um, from the live stream here. Um, this is for Greg. What's next for everybody on stage? Great question. Uh, there is a there's a podcast coming out. Uh, that is that is next. Uh, there's also a series we're in development that we're pitching to a very well known. Um, clothing company. Oh, uh, I was going to say, is it Disney? Is it Norwegian? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've done this before. Oh, okay, um, okay. And actually, we'll hear by the end of the month whether or not we got another $100,000 grant. So, <laughs> fingers crossed. That is for, um, that's for a project called The Leading Player Project, which is inspired by our production of Pippin that we just did, um, because there was a very special performer who got to play a leading role that she generally would not be cast in. Um, and she slayed it. And... Um, so basically what it is, it's a retraining program. It's a two-week program. We're going to fly people in from all over Canada, fingers crossed, uh, if we get the money. And there's a, a stacked roster of professional choreographers, and Sasha's going to give them a bunch of new monologues, and we're going to retrain them and give them a brand new book, brand new headshots. We're going to retrain them to be the leading player that they should be. Amen. Um, sure. Because in theater school, they're taught to be secondary. And uh, wow. this advocacy work doesn't work unless there's people who are ready to do what Rachel did and step up and spe what everyone in this room did tonight and mm -hmm. step into their spotlight. Mm -hmm. And um, that we want to train people to do that. So that's that's hopefully what's next at Canada Council. Approve that grant. Thank you so Big much. Daddy true <laughs> don't. We're looking for more money. Uh, does anyone in the room have a, a question? Uh, Paige Foskett here. Uh, for the for the folks at home on the stream who maybe didn't pick up her voice on the mic at all, um, mm -hmm. you're we're asking about um, the process between transitioning this from theater into film. Yeah, did I summarize that well for you, Paige? Okay, yeah. Good. Thumbs up. Um, I think the the biggest thing was we learned so much. <laughs> so much. <laughs> so much. <laughs> yep. Uh. Um, yeah, and we had we had some really amazing film folks who, who yeah. took us on that journey um, yeah. because it is, it's entirely different and the yeah. way you approach the work is mm -hmm. entirely different. Um, just even the time constraints were Absolutely. entirely different. So crazy. And like Cell Block Tango is done so many times, so many different ways. Uh, you can look up Cell Block Tango, a, bu a bunch, a billion videos. So for us, it was a matter of how do we make it different? How can we make it um, stand out? Um, and I think like uh, not not making it a parody, but but really being real and being vulnerable um, was really key for us in, in terms of having it stand out among the other cell blocks. So mm. yeah, it was a journey. And um, just for legal reasons, it is officially a parody. Um, it is so officially. don't get that twisted. <laughs> 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 we don't know where it's anything. It's all for entertainment purposes, folks. Right. Lovely. <laughs> uh, I think there was another question. Oh over yeah. Julian. So the question was, how do you feel about the impact mm -hmm. of this brand new trailblazing work? How do you how do you feel about the impact of being the trailblazer? <laughs> <laughs> Please, no one <laughs> jump in at once. It's uh, it's, yeah. it's weird. It's weird. No, it like <laughs> mm. yeah yeah it it is weird. No, uh, um, on on uh, honestly, like I feel like like. Making change is hard work. It's really hard. It's hard to step out of step into your light, step out of your light, step into yourself. Like being emo uh, emotionally available, um, trying to uh, you know get put yourself out there and just hope that people like it. You know what I mean? Like it's really hard, and it's um, and it's really taught me a lot about that. Um, but ultimately, I don't really think about the impact it's making, if that makes any sense. Like, I think about, like, what I wanted to see when I was, g when I was right going up in, in this industry. What I wanted to get from a teacher, you know, I tried to put that into, like, my directing and in producing or whatever it is. I, I'm trying to put in what I wanted to see growing up. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it's not really, it's not, 
like impact, awesome. That's cherry on top. But like for me, it's about connecting with people and allowing them to step into their light and being authentically themselves and just owning it and being proud of that and then just having that ripple effect. That's that's the goal for me. And I think the thing that we both set out to do when we did this is is yeah, it wasn't about impact. It was about telling six stories that we haven't heard before because we <laughs> we saw a theater piece this summer and we walked away screaming I'm bored because I'm <laughs> I'm bored I'm bored with seeing the same thing over and over again with the same people who look the exact same yeah. and that is not interesting to me yeah. and I don't think audiences know that they don't like it either <laughs> like it sucks uh, uh, like the Music Man is on Broadway again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who needs it? Yeah. Who's here for it? Yeah. Not me. Right. I just, there's, <laughs> like Kyle said, there's so many stories that, like, Matt can attest to this. There's so many stories that so many people are writing all over the world yeah. that are desperately need to be told. And it, it is audiences like yourselves who make that those things possible. The support that we have gotten on this project, that's the impact. Mm -hmm. The support that this project has gotten has allowed us, has given us the status mm -hmm. to now be able to go and do bigger and more amazing things. Yeah. So it really is the support of this community yeah. that has allowed any of this to happen. So right. I just want to thank you all so much. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting because, um, I, I don't know about you, I, I feel like for me, it, I get frustrated with like, this stuff in Canada, like mm -hmm. we don't really, see, there's a lack of representation in Canada. I remember g going to see uh, Hamilton in New York when it first came out and uh, everyone was raving about it and I was like, wh wh why, is, wh why is this so important? And when I saw it, I was literally like blown away because of all the diversity on stage. Um, and, and then I just went back to Canada so angry, marching <laughs> so angrily. And I was just like, I mean, like, this is, you know. And then recently just seeing, like, Beauty and the Beast and with, like, uh, a, a big girl who was uh, Belle. And, like, mm -hmm. do you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, I, it's like, I get so frustrated because people are like, oh, wow, that's so cool. It's like, yeah, duh. Like, <laughs> what? are you kidding me? I just find the lack of creativity really crazy. It really gets to me. Mm -hmm. And so that's that really w what drives me, honestly. And there's, yeah. there's a problem in Canada with our theater industry. There uh, is yeah. a lack of funding. There's a lack of support. Come From Away is a prime example of this. We, it's a Canadian show that's a juggernaut all over the world, yeah. and we couldn't support it here. Mm -hmm. So it comes down to, you know, petitioning <laughs> our <laughs> leaders <laughs> to make this happen, and, like, this work needs to be supported. So yeah. uh, We've got one more question oh on the stream here that I think is a great place to end. So if anyone else in the room has some more questions, we're going to have some time to mingle, have some bevies, ask them personally if you'd like. But I think this is a good spot to finish at for the evening. How can we get more involved with everybody on stage? Wow, um, <laughs> great question. Um, so we, there's a lot of there's a lot of amazing things, and the reality is that like I have to go to my serving job on Saturday and Sunday. So yeah. the reality is we do need financial support, um, and and the amount of people who have come out to this and supported our live stream. Thank you all the people who are there. It really is what makes us possible. It helped us get close to breaking even on this project. Every project takes time and money and effort and. I have some amazing people in the room who I've recently hired and I want to be able to support them and have them be able to do the amazing work that needs to get done. So 100% completely honestly, it is it is supporting us financially. You can support us on the website um, and that's that's the reality. That's the honest truth. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Big round of applause for Greg and Sasha and all of the other artists in the room that worked on this project tonight. A phenomenal work. Let's have some bevies. Let's, Let's mingle. Thank you so much for coming, folks. We really appreciate it. Yay. See you later, live stream.